Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs, and welcome back to the Skyblock Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. We're starting out today at the bottom of the nether mob farm that we built in the last episode, just so I can give you guys a quick update on the state of things down here. I didn't quite bring enough stone bricks with me to finish slabbing this whole area in here, but this is all bottom half slabs to make sure that nothing will spawn down here while we are making our way down here. The farm is quiet for now. I have turned it off just so we can assess the loot. We have occasional magma cubes trickling down here from the larger ones up there that are slowly splitting apart thanks to getting stuck in blocks and taking damage that way. I don't really have a solid way of dealing with the magma cubes at this point, but this whole thing has been going splendidly well. I'll bring in some stone bricks to get rid of that last row of leaves and the rest of it should be just fine. I've lit it up only so that it looks a little bit nicer on video. And as far as drops go, I've been sorting through the useful stuff that we have here. For a start, we have things like soul sand, which are going to be good for things like, say, summoning the wither, but also water bubble elevators and things like that. We have a whole bunch of coal and a bunch of blaze rods, of course, both of those being fuel sources. So our fuel situation is looking better and better by the day. And at the top there, nine wither skeleton skulls. We could summon the wither four times over at this point, and those nine skulls have taken me approximately half an hour to get in total, so really not that long at all. There's a whole bunch of bones here from the wither skeletons being obviously skeletons, and there are regular skeletons that drop in nether fortresses as well. We have a decent amount of gold from the zombie pigmen into the, to the point where I think I'm probably going to just close down the zombie pigman farm that we already have. I think this is going to generate enough gold for what we need for now. We get a little bit of rotten flesh to trade with villagers as well. And the quartz here from the blaze additional drops is going to be super useful for making the occasional redstone components. Although if I want quartz blocks, I will probably just get a stonemason and trade with those. Magma cream is kind of an outlier here. You'll notice we only have four magma cream in the chest, and that is because these little magma cubes don't really drop magma cream very much, if at all. Magma cream is more likely to come from the middle stage of a large magma cube once they break down into two smaller ones, and from there they break down into lots of other little ones, but the middle stage is the one that gives you the magma cream more frequently. So I haven't had much of a chance to gather a large amount of that, but of course, what we're working for here is blaze rods that can break down into blaze powder so we can manufacture our own magma cream instead of worrying too much about getting it naturally. So I'm going to take that with me, might make that into a little bit more potions of fire resistance, but I think we are going to take a bunch of these blaze rods and probably the wither skeleton skulls back to the overworld with me. I might also craft up some gold ingots from the gold nuggets we had in here before I do that, and it's also worth bearing in mind that a crafting table is still a solid block, so if you want to leave a crafting table down here and you don't want stuff spawning on it, make sure you put a slab over the top of it or just pack it up and take it with you, which is probably what I'm going to do today. Of course, that is the sorted chest. The loot chest over here has a greater variety of stuff in it. We've got even more blaze rods, bone quartz and all that kind of stuff in here. I'm probably going to come back for some of this, organize it, and figure out a way to dispose of things like the swords and the armor, which while the golden stuff is going to be useful to smelt down into nuggets, I'm not really going to care too much about that at this point when we're farming nuggets a different way, and the stone swords are virtually useless. But for now, it is time to leave this farm, and as you can see, it's spawning a whole bunch of stuff, including a pigman on the outside. That really shouldn't be happening. I wonder if he spawned somewhere else and then just wandered over onto the leaves there. I have added in a couple of slabs just to make sure that those blocks on the sides don't end up spawning stuff. I think we're mostly okay. It's possible that it might... No, it wouldn't have spawned on the observers there. Okay, yeah, not to worry. Hopefully that pig man there is just a relic of a previous area that I didn't spawn proof and I now have. So that's not going to be a problem. Today we're actually going to go back to the overworld and I'm going to make some preparations to come back here and use the portal on the top of the fortress here to head to the end because today I think we're going to fight the dragon and if we play our cards right we might end up fighting the wither as well. I think dragon fight prep is going to be pretty straightforward though because we've already got a few really good bows and things like that that I have fished up from the uh, fishing pond that I built over there in the jungle biome. We've got some power four and unbreaking bows here. I might combine two of those to get myself a power five and then just make sure that is fully repaired using one of the other bows I've got in here. Let's see if we can repair that. Three levels, nice and easy. I also want to make sure that I have the best possible feather falling enchantment on my boots, which right now is probably just going to take us to feather falling 
three, I think that's probably going to be enough for the time being at least. The next big deal is ladders so that I can make it up those pillars and making sure I have enough arrows on me, which I have plenty of in here. And of course we are farming arrows by the bucket load in both the mob farm that we have down here in the world, that one down there <laughs> behind the slimes. And of course, now that the skeletons are spawning in the one in the nether, we should probably get some arrows from there as well. But I think three or four stacks should be enough. It's been so long since I used a bow that didn't have infinity on it. I'm actually not entirely sure how many arrows I want to bring with me, but hopefully having a few stacks should be plenty. And one of the most important things here is going to be preparing for the dragon attacking me and having some serious fall damage, in which case I'm probably going to try and deploy the tactical water bucket approach of placing a water bucket that I can land in to break my fall right before I hit the ground because I haven't been sticking around in this world for long enough for phantoms to spawn, so a potion of slow falling isn't really a possibility. I can make some other potions though, so let's see if I have some glass hanging around. I've got three more bottles there. I think what I might try and do is get myself kitted out with at least a couple of potions of strength and maybe even a potion of swiftness or something like that as well. Regen would of course be super useful, but I haven't got to the point where I've built a ghast farm yet, so we can't really get any ghast tiers without setting up a spawning platform in the nether and letting ghast spawn freely, then hoping they don't drift away far enough that, you know, the uh, ghast drops will actually land on the same platform. Oops, just broke one of those melons. No worries, got an automatic farm for them anyway. So now that's an awkward potion, let's add some blaze powder to the main slot there so we can actually brew that. Let's make a potion of strength and I think we'll probably aim for strength too, just because of the extra boost that will give the sword that I've got here. I think adding a bit of glowstone to that makes sense, especially if we're going to have three of them. We could, of course, split these up into different potions if we wanted. We can add different effects to each one, but I think, especially if we're decreasing the duration by having a uh, glowstone dust added to the potion. I think three strength potions will probably be a good idea. Also a pretty good defense against any accidental enderman aggro that happens while we're there. Giving it a little extra thought though, we could always get that regen effect from a golden apple, so I might keep one of those around. Obviously it's not an enchanted one, but the enchanted one only gives you fire resistance and a little bit of extra defense anyway, so we should be fine here. I think the rest of these I'm going to brew up into more health potions. That way, if I turn them into splash health potions, I can get my health back at a moment's notice. Oh, <laughs> look who showed up inside the melon farm. Oh no, of course, he's just invisible. There we go. And oh, a bucket of tropical fish. That ain't too bad. Um, slime balls would have been useful a little while ago. The corn flour is not much use to me. Red sand, though. I could kind of go for some red sand right now. Come back, buddy. Come back. I see you dragging your llamas. Come over here. There we go. Let me have some red sand. Okay, 24 red sand once again. That's increasing our total stash to 48. I can just about afford to make like, uh, you know, a half a dozen <laughs> red sandstone blocks at this point. In fact, let's slap an extra glowstone dust in there to boost these up to instant health too. I think I got one of those from a witch originally. And then we'll throw some gunpowder in there to make them splash potions and we should have a nice, easy way to get healthy again. We'll probably brew up a couple more potions before we go, but I don't want to overburden myself and I can see my inventory getting clogged up here already. Just in case they come in handy, I figured we'd brew up a few potions of swiftness as well and I think that is everything I might need for this dragon fight. Bringing a few glass bottles empty is always a good idea just in case the dragon's breath is unavoidable and you kind of need to bottle some of that up to disperse it a little bit. Here we go, folks. Oh, I'm a little bit apprehensive. It's been a while since I fought the dragon, actually. So uh, without further ado, let's hop into the uh, the nether. And remember, the portal to the end is actually at the top of the nether fortress tower up here. So we have had access to it all along. We don't need any additional eyes of ender or anything like that. We just need to hop up there. And I brought a few extra ladders with me, so we may as well do it that way. <laughs> the farm is going. I can hear the farm going underneath me. Not to worry. We're just going to avoid all of that for now. And... All right, deep breaths. Let's do this. Right, here we go. And oh gosh, we're like out over the void at a higher height than usual. That's unusual, but I hope we'll be able to bridge out towards the landmass and avoid taking any major fall damage before we do this. That's why I brought the slabs with me in the first place here, of course. And now we could do the water bucket jump just as a proof of concept. 
Yep, can still do it. Still got it. Okay, great. Let's go take the dragon on. First task, of course, is taking down those end crystals, a few of which are within easy reach here, a few of which are a little bit higher and will need slightly better aim. Got to be a little bit cautious with my arrows, of course, because I do not have infinity on me and I need to remind myself of that fact regularly. Also remind myself of the fact that the dragon is lethal and will attack me at a moment's notice. Okay, trying not to look at the enderman here. And the landscape has generated very oddly this is a really weirdly shaped kind of spaced out and separate end island but as you can see we have solid ground and it's been a while since I've been able to sprint this confidently <laughs> it feels good after all of this skyblock stuff to have solid ground underneath my feet once again whoa okay careful now careful now don't want to take a dragon's breath to the face let's see if we can take out this tower over here first yes got it and now move our attention to the others Taking the crystals out is, of course, at priority number one because the dragon will regenerate health if we don't take those out. And whoa, yeah, I won't regenerate health if anything like that comes near me. Let's see if we can take out one of the shorter towers with the crystals on top. And these are, thankfully, nice and easy to do. We just need to ladder up the side here and hope the dragon's attention is not on me while I do this. We should ladder up to one block below the top here and... Bam. Okay, whoa. Easy now. Water bucket. Oh, gosh. Okay, that was a lucky one, actually. I landed right on the Enderman. Couldn't deploy the water bucket in time, but thankfully, we ended up not taking enough damage to die. Of course, if you end up dying in this, you can always come back to the end, and as long as you haven't lost all of your gear in the void, as long as the dragon has not punched you into the sky, then you should be able to recover your gear as though you have just left it behind. Let's see if we can make a second attempt on this end crystal, come up here, break the end crystal. Once we see it, fantastic, didn't take all that much explosion damage because we were just below the surface. The other crystal is over there, the caged one at least. I'm focusing on the caged ones for now. And this one is looking a little bit more precarious because it's out over this huge section of the void here. That could be a little bit more dangerous, but luckily, yeah, it looks like we have a nice easy shot at it. I'm going to have to be very, very quick while I do this. I can hear the dragon flapping around on my right. Need to be extra careful that I'm not going to get hit by it. And bam, there we go. End crystal taken care of. Whoa, okay, yep, that was another risky maneuver. And I need to get out of the way of the dragon's breath before it takes me out. Good, good, okay. Spend a bit of time regenerating health here before we focus on the rest of the towers. It's looking good so far. Also, haven't looked at any Enderman, which is a good move. Next crystals, that one up there. My bow shot is a little bit off today, but no, we got that one. Fantastic. That one on the tallest tower. Oh, wow, that was a one in a million shot right there. Let's see if we can take out the others as well. The dragon is pretty aggressive today, but that is good. We've got one more up there. Fantastic. I think that may be all the crystals, and we will know if it is or not by the fact that the dragon will start to come down into that central platform a little bit more often. Nope, looks like we have one more crystal to take care of up there. If my shot is true, which right now I am <laughs> missing a little bit here, just hitting the top of the tower, hopefully we can take out that crystal. I'm not going to be able to see the explosion if it is at a wider radius. It's a little bit of a risk, but I wonder if I could climb this tower and try and get a more level shot at the top of it from here. That might be kind of risky, but... Nope, looks like that's going to be kind of a difficult angle to do it from. Oh, well, I'll give it another quick couple of shots, and then I think I'll make my way down this ladder, and we'll try our best to take it out from the ground. The dragon is a bit difficult to handle once it's down there. Yeah, okay, great. So we need to make sure that we stay out of the way of those swooping attacks the dragon makes once it is off the pedestal. Oh, have I aggroed the enderman? Or oh, no, the, the enderman is aggroed by the dragon. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. Let's see if we can step back and get a slightly better angle on this tower. It's real difficult to hit this one, though. If all else fails, we could try climbing that tower, but climbing the tower is going to be incredibly difficult, and yep, look like that one hit right on the edge. Maybe adjust my aim slightly. Hit the dragon on the way up. Not too bad. Yikes. Okay, yep, it is breathing at me right now. I'm wondering if maybe we can take advantage of the fact the dragon is down on the, on the bedrock pedestal and try and la uh, ladder up this tower. Nope, it's coming for me. I can I can see that beamer moving. Okay, not to worry. Not to worry. Have the uh, have the water bucket on the hotbar just in case. I think it's getting a little bit further away. So maybe I can take out this crystal like so. Yep, yeah, perfect. Okay, and then on the way back down, just need to avoid the dragon's breath and any physical attacks. And I think, yep, from what I can see, that is all the crystals down. 
So now the priority becomes attacking the dragon. It looks like I still have three stacks of arrows left. I grossly overestimated the amount I would need. And dr attacking the dragon in the air is not super easy, of course, with the maneuverability of it. But it is going to be a little bit safer than attacking it when it sweeps down to the portal. So I think we will do our best here to get a couple of shots in. I'm missing every single one, whiffing all the shots on the way down. And then we'll do our best to bottle up a little bit of dragon's breath and get in a couple of melee hits. Yep, there we go. We got the achievement. We got those Dragon's Breath bottles. Let's see if we can take a couple of swings from the side. Whoa, okay. I need my water bucket back, please. Oh, dang it. Okay, didn't quite deploy it in time. Oh, well. I guess we'll have to head back to the nether and go in for round two. The good news is, now we've died, there is a little bit less at stake. As long as I can survive the fall from up here, which I should be able to, I should be able to find my gear wherever it landed out here. I think it was down by one of the taller towers, down one of the kind of lower sections over here. Yep, you can see, oh gosh, no, did I actually place the water? Has that washed all of my gear off into the void? Please tell me it hasn't. Oh my goodness, folks, I have a terrible sinking feeling that all of my gear has now just been washed off the island into the void. Well, fighting the dragon is going to be a little bit more difficult, considering I can only melee attack it now. All that preparation, you guys, you can see quite how badly this fight can go if you are not prepared for it. Well, I will do what I can anyway. Let's go in for a couple of melee hits on the legs. Yep, we are still doing the occasional bit of damage here and there. I'll just have to be prepared to take care of the dragon hand to hand. <laughs> But I have to say, it seems like the hand-to-hand -hand combat method is working. I know it's the coward's way out going for the legs here, but I don't really have much option. I haven't got any armor on me or anything. Still, the dragon is almost down to half health. I think this is going a lot better than I expected it to on a second try. Yep, okay, the dragon is loose. Now I just have to play avoidance tactics for a little while. Nice, it's taking out some of those. Oh gosh, okay, I've aggroed the enderman. This is definitely going to be the end of me. I can get up here onto this ladder, but that is it. There is no way of avoiding their aggro, and as soon as I throw an ender pearl, I will probably be able to leave their aggro range, but I will end up dying. Yep, nope, I hit the ground too hard. Oh, shame. Okay, <laughs> time to go back in there for round two. This time, I might bring a couple of extra pieces of gear with me. Let's at least take some of these. Yep, there we go. And I think maybe a smite sword will have to do in the meantime. It feels a little bit better having a sword in hand. Smite 3 isn't going to do any further damage to the dragon. Having a pickaxe will be good at least. I can't believe I just dumped that bucket of water right as I landed and it washed all my gear away. Typical. <laughs> Somehow the dragon fight always ends up going this way. Never mind, I've got a little bit of gear with me, so hopefully we shouldn't have to just punch the dragon this time, although it'd be kind of amusing to do that. I've got a bow and some arrows with me as well, so time for round three. The adrenaline rush of this dragon fight has kind of taken over my brain a little bit, and I completely forgot to take any food with me, so I'm already at a disadvantage, having taken a little bit of fall damage coming off of that spawning platform, but I'm going to try my best to get a little bit of damage dealt to the dragon. If we end up respawning again, Again, that is not such a big deal. Now let's get in at the legs. Yep, avoid that dragon's breath. Come around to the leg side and deal it a couple of swift chops to the hind section here. Wow, okay, a half a heart left. The dragon just dealt me a massive blow with its wings. I have a feeling it's probably going to do enough damage to take me out here in just a second, but I will try and do enough damage to it while I can. I'm okay for now. We are stable, but it looks like the dragon is curving around for another pass at the portal, and yep, it should be spiraling down there in a second. Hopefully I can avoid the eyes of all of these endermen and take it out with the bow here. Man, <laughs> I'm still reeling from the fact that we lost all of our gear just now. Now, that really, really sucks. Of course, this is Skyblock. We started from nothing. We can get all of that stuff back, but it's just going to take a little bit of time trading and patience, which right now I don't have a whole lot of. And it looks like we are about to deal the final blow to the dragon if I can just land a single shot with my arrow. Yes! <laughs> with half a heart remaining and all of my original gear gone, we have freed the end. We've defeated the dragon. And I didn't get those bottles of Dragon's Breath after all, but I am okay with that because I'm able to get all of my levels back. Look at this. We're able to get to roughly level 68, I think, or 63, 64. Nice. Oh, a 65. There we go. A very Minecrafty number there for a second. But yes, we got ourselves everything. We got the dragon egg on top here as well. 66. Let's take that out and let's see where it teleported to because we should be able to recover it from there if I... Oh, I don't even have torches to put underneath it. Let's see if I can swipe a torch from the end return portal here. 
Yep, got one. Okay, let's at least bring the dragon egg back. That is kind of the least we could do at this point. Take out the block above that, let it drop onto the torch, and we got the egg. The next generation complete. Oh, I'm ready for a lie down after that. I don't know about you. <laughs> Back home again, back home again with, oh, a little bit of XP. There we go, 68. I knew it was 68. Something was telling me that we were owed a few more levels there, but fantastic. We now have the dragon's egg, and I can put that in pride of place somewhere inside of my home. And you may be wondering why I didn't go and trade for a little bit more diamond armor when I did that. And unfortunately, there seems to have been some kind of catastrophe down here. And while these guys are still producing iron golems, Three villagers in here have ended up getting completely lost. I think there has been some kind of issue here when I tried to move some chunks over from the other version of the map because I've been trying to figure out a way of moving the uh, witch hut into this world from version 4.07 of the map. And I think it ended up deleting a bunch of entities down at this level. All of these villagers seem fine, but anything at this area of the world. I think the sheep that are in there were gone and now they've just, you know, spawned a bunch of random other passive mobs, including this horse, which is, <laughs> oh yeah, there we go, <laughs> trying to get pushed off the platform by an iron golem. So despite that these villagers are kind of fine, we are kind of down an armorer, a weaponsmith and a toolsmith. And unfortunately, yes, Hubert was a sacrifice in that. So I'm going to have to spend a little bit of time breeding a couple more villagers just so I can get my access to diamond tools back, which shouldn't be too difficult, but it is going to take a little while. I might even try curing them from zombie villagers again, just so we can get those discounts. But in the meantime, we still have a few diamond tools. We can get ourselves some obsidian, and once we head out to the outer end islands, we can make ourselves an enchanting table with the diamonds that we should hopefully find in those end city loot chests. But that is going to involve a little bit of resource gathering so that we can start bridging out there in the first place. I'm not going to rush it today, and you know what? That dragon fight kind Kind of took the wind out of me a little bit. So this is as close as I'm going to come to rage quitting. I think we're going to wrap up this episode here. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Skyblock Survival Guide. Survival might be a little bit questionable, but at least we got that Ender Dragon fight taken care of. Don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.